bless again my friends this is part two of as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be in the end in the coming of the son of man you see when the flood came humanity was all about self love they have no regard for one another no regard for God matter of fact Genesis 6 tells us that God see that the hearts of men were only evil continually and that he he regretted that he has made man And Jesus makes a statement when he says, As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. This posed the question that we need to answer. What were the days of Noah like? Were the days like today? Were there days where intellectual giants dominate the scene with all their architecture and design, with all their with all their towers and and, and building that's so fascinated that it warrants one turning the head and look with intent gaze and ponder wow a were there days where man was so in inhumane to humanity that they had no regard for life for property are for whatever the individual owns. Were there days where man could do as he pleased and have no one to answer to but himself? Were there days where men would value material things over the lives of an individual? Man would care more about their cars and their gadgets their homes and their lands rather than give a second thought to the care and need of the poor and needy were there days where the those who have have more and seek to want more and those who don't have seems to get in no better but having less than less where the margin between the rich and the poor were so vast that you need a telescope to tell the gap from one end to the other. Beloved, during the time of Noah, the Bible reminds us that God saw the hearts of man, that the thoughts of the hearts of men were only evil continually not the actions the thoughts the thoughts of the hearts of men were only evil continually you see man has shift from one pendulum to the next a paradigm shift had taken place in the hearts of men that men no longer regard the God of heaven as their God. Man seek to look to some other God. They carve out their own God and their God was themselves. Man answered to no one but himself. It was a society about me, myself, and I. The triune trinity 
of the desperate condition of the deplorable state of humanity self a society that loves self more than God a society that seeks to preserve its own life than give it in servitude to his fellow man does that sound familiar well whether we believe it or not we are there again the days of Noah are here man have used the natural resources the natural resources of the earth the precious metal they have used it to make great cars buildings gadgets jewelry household furnishing clothing adorning all these natural resources of life that God had placed in the earth and on the earth for the use of humanity humanity has used these natural resources and instead of giving God thanks and giving God the glory humanity has claimed the glory for themselves and all the genius designs and all these they have claimed it and attributed to their great wisdom. And God get none the glory. But they take all the glory for themselves. This was what constitute the downfall of the antediluvian world. All this ingratitude and ungratefulness towards God brings down God's judgment and humanity. All these things, they contribute to its destruction. Sin was in maximum overdrive. What do I mean? Sin permeates the whole world that it was hard to tell the natural man from one who wasn't possessed by demons. Sexual sin, profanity, immorality, sexual immorality, idolatry, witchcraft, love for self rather than love for God, hate for the brother, hate for the sister, parental hate, incest, rape. Sodomy, all these were part and parcel of the times of Noah, just prior to the flood. Pre flood Noah was an evil generation, yet they were great intellectual giants. But it's funny to see that great intellectual giant. Upon Noah building the ark, every blow that Noah struck with that hammer was a living testimony to the truth of the word of God. Noah preached and he preached and he appealed and man would not budge. Man whom God had created with wisdom, intellect, power and freedom of choice use their freedom to dishonor and disobey and rebel against God rather than to exercise faith in the living God and enter the ark believe the word of Noah God said to Noah get you into the ark you and your three sons and their wives and your wife 
for only thee have I seen righteous in the land. One fascinating thing happened. You see, beloved, man had never seen rain fall from a clouded sky before. Man had never experienced rain pouring down from above. It would appear to be that this would give them great reason to laugh at Noah. Because what he's talking about is seemingly impossible. It's foolishness. But little did they know that what seems impossible for man is possible for the Almighty. While man whom God created in his own divine image with wisdom and intellect and moral courage and reasoning man who should have known better man whom should have acted upon their senses they stood laughing and mocking while the animal kingdom realized that something is about to go down and it doesn't look right the animal kingdom. When Mr. Lion said to Mrs. Lion, Honey, it's time to go. Go where, darling? Go to the ark that Noah is building. God instilled in these dumb animals enough wisdom to know to escape the flood to come. As Mr. and Mrs. Lion approached the ark, Mr. and Mrs. Giraffe, Mr. and Mrs. Donkey, Mr. and Mrs. Horse, Mr. and Mrs. Baboon, Mr. and Mrs. Monkey, Mr. and Mrs. Dog, Mr. and Mrs. Pig, Mr. and Miss Rabbit, Mr. and Miss Cat, Mr. and Miss Dog, as they approach, and all these animals, Mr. and Miss Elephant, as they approach, Mr. and Miss Zebra, as they approach the ark, the vicinity of the ark, man was dumbfounded. How could it be that these animals make their way towards the ark in such order and care and loving unity? No one was trying to bite the other. The leopard wasn't trying to bite the hyenas. The wolf wasn't trying to eat the sheep as Mr. and Miss Sheep approach. Mr. and Mrs. Cow, as they approach, as the wild beast, as the bull, as the oxen, as they all approach the ark, no one knew. That was even more confirmation for Noah that God means business. The Bible say the clean animal entered the ark by sevens. Seven pairs of every clean animal and the unclean by two. A male and its female. They entered. And beloved man, while the animals were on the inside, mankind 
stood on the outside. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the end. For man shall be marrying and giving in marriage. They shall be eating and drinking, marrying and giving into marriage. You see, nothing wrong with marriage. Nothing wrong with eating and drinking. It is when you are doing these things at the expense of your own soul salvation. God will have us realize that when we carry out our actions for every action that we took upon ourselves to carry out there is a consequence and there is reward as much as there is a reward for being righteous there is also a reward for being unrighteous the animals enter the ark and God commanded Noah. Noah gave his aim, his last benediction and his final appeal. And no one responded but his household and those of the animal kingdom. God said to Noah, get thee in the ark. Thou and thy household, thou and thy wife, thy sons and thy sons' wives. Noah and his family entered and God shut them in. And for seven days they were locked in the ark. No rain, no change to the atmosphere. But at his, at, as it approached the ending of the seventh day, something began to happen. Dark clouds began to move in place. Lightning began to flash. Thunder began to rumble. And the rain began coming down. The Bible also tells us that the fountains of the deep were broken up. And the jet stream that God has in the earth break loose. And water, like a burst main pipe, began spewing, towering meters above. And the wicked on the outside realize what they have done. They have turned their backs and salvation full and free. All they need to do was just believe the preaching and enter into the ark. But they were so hooked to what they have in this world. They were so tied to their worldly assets and their worldly affair. They were so hooked on pornography. They were so hooked on idolatry. They were so hooked on sexual immorality. They were so hooked on drugs, tobacco. Hooked, beloved. And all these evil that they could not think straight and make logical decisions. Does this sound like our world today? As the rain came and began to lift the ark from the earth. Men crying and crying, weeping and wailing. They, 
attempt to break down the arc door, but it was so shut, firm and secure that no one, no human hand could budge or break it. Beloved, the ark is not a means of safety and deliverance in these our last days. The literal ark is not. And Christ promised us that when we see, he said, I will set my bow in the heavens. That I make a promise with humanity that I will not destroy the earth again with another flood. So that us human beings, when we see the torrential rain pouring, the lightning and the thunder, we will not be fearful and believe in that, hey, another flood to wipe us off again. God has set his bow to remind us that we may take comfort in the fact and in the promise that he has made. He will never destroy the earth again with another flood. Friends, I encourage you, do not make the same mistake that the antediluvian made. Not because a thing had never happened before doesn't mean that it cannot happen. In the book of Peter, the Bible tells us that the world back then was destroyed with a water, with flood. It was destroyed by a mighty flood. And the one that is no is is left remain and remain to be destroyed with fire. So you would think then that I've never seen fire destroy a whole earth. No way that's going to happen. This is the thought, our train of thoughts of many. But once God promised something, you can bank on it. It will happen. Friends, the appeal is simple. Are you ready to give God a chance? in your life are you ready to look away from yourself governing situation status way of life and the Lord the Spirit of the Lord God to be your governor are you alone ready to give up of your own self-willed and strong-willed and allow God to have his will and his way in your life. Are you prepared to let God be God in your heart? I appeal to you today. Jesus reminds us from Matthew chapter 6. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you all the things that are necessary all the things that you need to have are to lead a comfortable and peace driven life all those things will be added unto you whether it be clothing whether it be food whether it be raiment whatever whether it be shelter be a spouse all these things that God designed that you should have will be yours just seek him first and his righteousness and all shall be added unto you friends God loves you if only you knew if only you know how much 
God loves you. You might not know who he is. You might not have a relationship with him. You might not even be a church person. But beloved, God loves you. And he wants you to know that for you, he shed his blood at Calvary and died. For you, he gave his life. For you, he lived a pure life of righteousness that he imparts unto you. For you, he takes your, li your life of sin and shame and bear it to Calvary so that you could have his pure life of righteousness. For God so loved the world that he gave his son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. And this is the condemnation that light has come but man rather darkness than light because their deeds were evil. Friends, whatever your evil deeds are, whatever you're doing that is wrong, God can give you the power and the strength to overcome them, to give them up and begun. Begin to do right. It is not impossible. I appeal to you today. Allow the Lord to disturb your peace right now. Allow the Lord to enter your space. And whatever your sins, whatever they may be, you are not too far from God in your sin. You have not sinned too much that God cannot forgive you. God said, I love you with an everlasting love. And with loving kindness have I drawn you unto me. He said to you from Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a hope and a future. He's calling you from Isaiah 1, verse 16 and 17. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doing from before my face. Cease to do evil and learn to do well. Seek peace and pursue it. And come now, let us reason together, say the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. This is the condition, beloved. And if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat from the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord God, Elohim, has spoken. As I pray, beloved, will you give God a chance? Right now in your space, this earth is about to come to its close. And man would have exhausted their opportunity to life everlasting. Probation is soon to close upon a dying world. Revelation 22:11 He that is holy let him be holy still behold i come quickly and my reward is with me to give unto every man according as his work shall be he that is holy let him be holy still he that is righteous let him be righteous still he that is filthy let him be filthy still and behold i come quickly and my reward is with me to give unto every man according as his work shall be whether it be good or whether it be evil ezekiel posed a question when he asked 
the children of Israel were contending with the fact that God is not just. So the Bible asks us the question when it says, If the righteous man turns from his righteousness, his righteous ways, and began to do wickedly, all the righteousness that he had done, he shall not be remembered for them, but he shall be remembered for the evil that he is now doing. And if the evil and unrighteous man turn from his evil and unrighteous ways and begins to do good, all the evil and unrighteous deeds that he were doing, he shall not be remembered for them, but shall be remembered now for the good and righteous thing that he's now doing. God is a merciful, forgiving God. And beloved, I appeal to you now that you have not been so evil and wicked in whatever you were doing that God cannot forgive you. If you confess your sins, the Bible tells us in John, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have no sins, we make God a liar and the truth is not in us. Jesus is calling you now to come to him. Come to him. Come unto me, he said. All you that are labored and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and gentle in heart. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is going to come soon and he's coming back for a prepared people. The Bible tells us that in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who are alive and remain, who are living for him, shall be caught up. And we shall meet together in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. But the wicked and the abominable and all liars and whoremongers and idolaters shall find themselves in the lake of fire which burn with brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. For this is the second death. Blessed and holy are those who have part in the first resurrection for upon them the second death had no power. Christ paid it all for you, beloved. When he gave his life at Calvary, it was so that you wouldn't have to die the second death. Only the death as a result of the consequence of sin, the natural death, but not the second death. For all of us, if we live long enough, will die the natural death. Some will not die the natural death, but will go through a process of transformation in the twinkling of an eye in preparation and readiness for translation. Friends, Will you come to Jesus? Will you say, Lord, take my life and let it be consecrated all to thee? Will you say, take my silver and my gold? Not a might would I withhold. Will you say, Lord, I am sorry for all the wrongs that I have done. Please forgive me. And wash me in your blood. Cleanse me from my sins and my iniquity. 
and change my heart, this heart of stone, to a heart of flesh that will obey you and your commands. Make me ready for your second coming. Will you come? Will you accept Jesus now as your personal Savior? Those of you who are listening, beloved, if you need information as what you need to do in order to prepare for the second coming of Jesus Christ, if you need Bible studies, if you need further information regarding a church, regarding prayer, counseling, whatever you need, please drop me a line, DM me and my YouTube channel and I by God's grace will seek to furnish you with all the necessary information that you desire friends as I pray any prior requests you have DM them to me and I will pray accordingly by God's grace according to his will Eternal God and our Father, God of creation, God of the universe, as I come to you, Lord, on behalf of all my listeners, I pray, God, that you will strengthen each heart, give each individual the courage and the strength to reach out to you. As they reach out to you by faith, Lord, I pray that you will grasp their hands and you will speak to their hearts. This is the way, walk ye in it. Help them, dear God, to come to know you and to give themselves to you before it's too late. Thank you, Father, for them. May you bless their going out and bless their coming in. And when you come, Lord, may all of us, I mean all of us, those who listen to these messages and who are sharing them with others, all of us go home to live with you through the ceaseless ages of eternity. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen.